Upward inflection and downward inflection. Now you're going to need to do it opposite of what you think. And I'll give you an example. We're on a coaching call from a previous training a couple of months ago. And someone is really pushing back against one of the things that we said will work. Now what you guys are going to find is we'll tell you it works. And you're going to sit there and you're like, okay, okay. And a little bit later when we ask you to do it, you'll say, I can't do that. That's not going to work. So when you do that, it's my gut instinct to say to you, so when I told you before that it worked, you thought I was wrong. Now that's downward inflection. And what's my tone of voice telling you that I'm thinking about you at that time? That tone of voice is saying, you're an idiot. <laughs> so instead, I say it, so when, you told, when I told you before that it worked, you thought I was wrong? Now, that felt completely differently, right? And that's how your tone of voice can go from an accusation to, in a way, it's thought-provoking. And my tone of voice the second time will cause you to actually think about it. And I got the reaction that I wanted from the, the person we were coaching. They kind of went, they went, oh, no. Because I knew that my tone of voice was going to have their impact on their ability to process the information. And that's a mastery move. When you want, probably when you want to inflate down, when you really want to, it's probably, you should, you should inflect up. Because you're creating thoughts, as Brandon says over and over again, you're creating emotional moments in the other side. Most of those emotional moments that you're creating is you're trying to get people to think about stuff in a positive and constructive way. You're trying to get them to rethink in a positive and constructive way. You're trying to point out when you think they're wrong, and especially when you think they're wrong, that's when your tone is going to kill you, and you're going to want to switch it up. And that's where the mastery comes in. And with practice, you'll get it. But without practice, you won't get it. And I don't know how many of you noticed, but in the prep session with each one of the volunteers, I'm really working hard at an encouraging tone of voice. And I don't know if anybody was looking at my prep then, but these three people are walking in in front of a room full of people expecting to get barbecued their brain is probably already shutting down, and that is the last thing that collectively is an instructional team that we need. And my team is relying on me to do as much as I can to get the three volunteers on point because they are getting ready to get punched right in the face. So my tone in each one of those briefing sessions was very specific to be encouraging and upward inflecting and non-threatening because I need them thinking and working with me. And it was all tonality. We were showing you tone before we even got into the exercise. But those are the two quick issues. If you want to inflect down, there's a pretty good chance you should inflect up. Just practice it a few times and you'll get it. Get your reps in.